So what did the audience think about that? And what about the man who was at the front and center for the governor's speech, the event's organizer, and a huge political donor by the name of Sheldon Adelson? Joining us now, another man who was in that audience, the Republican strategist Steve Song. We welcome you back to the program. You. Uh, were you impressed by what you heard from the governor out there? Did you think he carried himself off well? He was a star. And I say that in a lot of ways. I mean, he, he so overshadowed the other governors that were there. His message was right on target. He spoke uh, from the heart. He demonstrated again, uh, Mike, that uh, he is a great leader. And the crowd responded to him. They gave him three standing ovations. We heard there were some murmurings. He used the term occupied territories, referring to the West Bank. What, what do you make of that? Well, it, it was an unfortunate slip, I think. I don't believe the governor really meant that. You know, he uh, subsequently apologized or that's clarified. That's exactly right. And I, you know, when you get into Middle East diplomacy, you know, a lot of phrases that are, that are thrown around here and there. Listen, I know Governor Christie, and the people in that crowd know Governor Christie, and he's a strong defender of the state of Israel. He loved being over there. He talked about his experiences, about bringing his family, what it meant to him, and you could see his strong, strong devotion to the state of Israel. Was there any sense over there that this candidate who looked so uh, almost invincible a few months ago was tainted, perhaps fatally tainted, politically by the bridge scandal and by some of the controversies over Sandy funds? Well, listen, I mean, a lot of people, uh, most of the people attending that conference uh, really don't know the ins and outs of what happened here in New Jersey. They've been following this in the press. I personally don't think that uh, that means a lot to folks outside of New Jersey. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, the governor still has uh, a couple of investigations that are going on. This issue is not totally behind him. But let me tell you, he took a big step over the weekend of putting it behind him. And the crowd reacted to that very well because they saw him as a governor who leads the state. Event organized at, and at the, uh, the, the Grand Palace of Sheldon Adelson, the Venetian Hotel, a magnificent, huge place. This is a man, a, a multi-billionaire. I believe he's the ninth richest man in the world, according to some surveys. He put more than, he and his wife put more than $90 million into the last presidential race, bankrolled Newt Gingrich for a long time as well. Supposedly this time around wants to find somebody who can win. And he was there for the governor's speech. He wasn't there for some of the other speeches as well. Is Adelson, do you think, prepared to commit himself to Christie? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know Sheldon that well, uh, but uh, clearly he uh, uh, demonstrated an interest in getting to know Chris Christie better. Uh, he sat front and center uh, when the governor spoke in the first row, right opposite him. I understand the governor had a uh, conversation uh, with uh, Sheldon. Uh, I would hope that Sheldon uh, would support him if the governor decides to uh, take the step to run for president, not only because of his uh, position uh, regarding Israel, which is very important to Sheldon, but uh, Sheldon and all the folks there uh, want a candidate for president in 2016 who can win. And uh, they, want, they liked very much Chris Christie's message about bringing the Republican Party together, about what it takes to win elections. It's not a question of an ideological debating society, as he said. You know, if you want to have that kind of thing, let's form a university. You know, this is a political party. It's about winning elections. And he gave a very strong message to folks there about how to win elections. There are some, though, who are worried about the governor in, you know, I guess, reaction to what's happened in this state. Uh, and there's talk of a draft Jeb Bush movement, the former Florida governor. Now, you, your political experience goes back to the days of the Reagan-Bush administration. Uh, Jeb is a very popular uh, former governor of the state of Florida. Strong ties uh, to the Jewish community down there and throughout the country as well. Uh, if Jeb Bush were to decide to run, would it be tough for you to decide who you wanted to support? Oh, well, listen, where I stand here in New Jersey, if uh, Governor Christie would decide to run for president of the United States, uh, I'd be a very strong supporter of his. Uh, but uh, it, we have to see what happens. I mean, uh, uh, Jeb Bush is a very formidable individual. I know him. I know his family very well. A terrific public servant. He's been an excellent governor of Florida. He would make a great president of the United States. Uh, this is so early right now, Mike. You've got two years before this uh, campaign gets kicked off. I think what you're seeing, however, is that the, the core of the Republican Party, the so-called establishment or donor class of the party, the leadership of the party, is searching for a candidate. They want to have somebody who can win the election. 
They don't want to have a candidate for president who's got fatal flaws, who's got problems, who's got an ideology that's out of the mainstream of, of, the, of the country. They want a candidate who has great uh, leadership experience. They want someone who has a vision for the country. They want uh, someone who knows how to govern properly. And uh, what you see in Jeb Bush is someone like that, as well as some of the other governors who are very successful and could, could also make very good presidents. Steve, have to leave it there. Always appreciate your coming on. Thank you, Mike.